Sports Illustrated just opened a new store right in your own living room with a large selection of the newest, hottest, and most unique sports merchandise and entertainment releases. At the Sports Illustrated store, you can get the best sports videos like Michael Jordan Airtime. Plus, quick access to championship tapes featuring the Super Bowl, the NBA Finals, the Final Four, and the World Series. There's also high-quality, authentic sports merchandise, the real stuff from NFL Pro Line, NBA Authentics, and Major League Baseball's Authentic Diamond Collection. Our sports collectibles feature the original 1954 first issue of Sports Illustrated as well as signed SI covers from some of the biggest names in sports. Plus, there's also the latest SI book releases. It's sport shopping the easy way. Just look for our product inserts or our Sports Illustrated store ads in the pages of SI. To order, call toll-free 1-800-274-5200. You know, last year, the NFL had all the things that fans have come to expect from pro football. In all professional sports, I don't think anything quite compares to the spectacle of the NFL. I think everybody knew going in last year that Dallas was the dominant team. Deep to the post, Harper! Not only did this team have talent, but had great desire to dominate. It was a great year for old pros. You know, vintage guys like Sims, Montana, and Allen. Once again, the magician that is Joe Montana. Pulls Certainly wasn't a bad year for young guys either. Of course, you had Reggie Brooks and Jerome Bettis at running back, and you had quarterbacks like Rick Meyer and Drew Bledsoe. It's very unusual for quarterbacks to have an impact like that so quickly. It's a touchdown! Who got you? And, of course, pro football always has its lighter side. You see him? Evidently not. Freddie broke his nose. That's what's the matter when you broke his nose. He never had a good nose anyways. Listen to the roar of this crowd if this doesn't work. Lock it down at sweet. You just stand there fiddle fighting with it. Don't block his ass. In the end, however, the Dallas Cowboys' talent and fire prevailed in a big way. Fake throws it to Harper. Touchdown. It's anybody's guess how off-season developments will affect Dallas's chances of winning a third straight Super Bowl. But for one of 27 challengers to Dallas's supremacy, this is how it went last year, a year that had it all, NFL 93. Each autumn, tradition stirs, rustling through the trees in the historic Wisconsin town of Green Bay, beckoning to thousands of followers to gather in a stadium called Lambeau. I love the game. The game is played in the sun, it's played in the cold, it's played in, no matter what the hell is. That's why football's the greatest game going. That's what it's all about. In 1993, the Packers captured the imagination of Green Bay fans everywhere, renewing pride and passion to a team and celebrating 75 years of professional football. Rolling to the right. Favre looking into the end zone. Touchdown, Stoneyshire. Yeah, better try to get to the outside. Got to dive into the end zone. Does. Echo Bennett to the outside. Back to throw it. Far pumps it over the middle. Touchdown. Touchdown. Oh, what a catch by Robert Brooks. Be the difference, guys. Be the difference. One, two, three. Go. Let's go now. Let's go. The Packers put together back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time in over a quarter century. And for the first time in over a decade, return to the playoffs. We worked so hard to get this thing done this year, and we haven't done it easy one time. 
I am so proud of you, I can't put it into words. But you know the thing we talked about last night at the meeting about staying together, fighting, overcoming obstacles, making believers out of people that didn't think we could get it done? Man, it's been 25 years, okay? It's been 25 years. Congratulations to each and every one of you. The Packers emerged in week one with a noticeable difference. Number 92, Reggie White. The Pro Bowl defensive end spurred on Green Bay as the Packers defense set the tempo for a special season. I want to go to the up back. No, they do go to Gary. He tries to get to the outside. He was hit in the end zone. Did safety. he get out or not? Safety. It is a safety, says the official. The official says it is a safety. Brian Noble on the hit. He did not get out of the end zone, Max. And it was exactly what we were talking about. The special teams play of punter Brian Wagner and teammates Marcus Wilson, Doug Evans, and Dexter McNabb pinned Los Angeles deep, helping to stifle the Rams' offensive game plan. Quarterback Brett Favre became the Packers' all-time leader in career passing percentage, throwing for over 260 yards and two touchdowns. Here is the draw play up the middle to Bennett. Bennett's got the five-yard line. Bennett on his feet. Touchdown! Holy cow! He wouldn't give up! On a long cut, straight back in the pocket, looking. Comes up to the left to Clayton. Clayton touchdown! Clayton diving. He caught it about the one-yard line and then dived over the goal line, and that's a player with great instinct. The Packers' season got cooking in week six as Green Bay hosted the playoff-bound Denver Broncos in the first-ever Sunday night game at Lambeau Field. Behind the efficient offensive line of Doug Widell, Ken Rutgers, Harry Galbraith, and Joe Sims, Brett Favre connected with tight end Jackie Harris five times as the Packers charged to a 30-7 halftime lead. Or Favre, who's straight back in the pocket. Now he's coming up over the middle. Jackie Harris oh, at the 40, gone. the 35-30, the 25-20, the 10, the 5, touchdown! for Jackie Harris of 65 yards from quarterback Brett Favre. You can't throw it any better than that, Jim. Now Favre rolls, hands it off to Bennett, trying to get to the outside, got to dive into the end zone, does! Edgar Bennett to the outside was trying to... Green Bay's lead was short-lived. As the Broncos raced back, threatening to take the lead with time running out, it was up to the Packer defense to eliminate any chance of one of John Elway's classic comebacks succeeding. On Denver's final offensive play from scrimmage, the Packers' secondary supplied superb coverage, allowing Green Bay's Minister of Defense to administer the fatal blow LA to the Broncos. The pressure, LA looking. LA dancing around. He, he goes, goes down. He goes down. down by Reggie White. And the game is going to be won by the Packers. Reggie White gets him to back fourth now. What a play. quite a guy and, and the, his teammates like him uh, he's a leader he's not a real vocal leader but he is a leader and and people when they play next to him and on our defense uh, just believe in their mind that we're better because of him keep a mind on what we're supposed to do and go out and dominate Reggie White the most sought after player in the 1993 free agency market brought strength and productivity to the Packer defensive front becoming pro football's all-time sack leader. The standout defensive end tied for top honors in the NFC with 13 sacks and was selected to his eighth consecutive Pro Bowl in 1993, the first Packer defensive end to be so honored in 15 years. We're back home for the Florida Bowl. We're back home. 
It was a festive homecoming for number 27 Terrell Buckley in Week 8's contest with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The young cornerback registered his first interception of the season, much to the pleasure of the Packer backers in attendance. The defensive front of Reggie White, John Yurkovich, Matt Brock, and Wayne Simmons held the Buccaneers scoreless in the first half. The Packer defense wasn't the only unit making strides in Tampa Bay. Brett Favre and Sterling Sharp contributed to the victory as Sharp tied an all-time Packer record with four touchdown catches in Green Bay's romp over the Buccaneers. With Edgar Bennett split in a two-pro set. Here's Favre on a quick slant. Touch. Patterson Sharp, touchdown! Quick slant to Sterling Here's Sharp. Favre now looking to the end zone. Touchdown! Guess who? Sterling Sharp. For a quick pattern now comes to the sideline of Sterling Sharp. 15 to the 10. He's going to go again, folks. Touchdown, Sterling Sharp. And here is Favre quickly to the outside. And Sterling He's Sharp. He's going to go. 20. He's gone. Sharp's four scoring receptions matched a 48-year-old record set by Packer great Don Hudson back in 1945. The 15 to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. A mistake made by the quarterback into the end zone. Fourth time today that Sharp and Brett Favre have combined for that combination. Despite playing with an injured foot over the last half of the season, an injury that kept him from practicing over that span, All-Pro Sterling Sharp once again took the NFL by storm in 1993. Here is the play action fake by Favre. Goes to the sideline. Sharp at the five. Sharp away. Scores for the Packers. Favre looking into the end zone. Touchdown, Sterling Sharp. Almost overthrew it, but Sharp was all alone for some reason, and he makes the catch for the touchdown. Yeah, as much as we throw the ball to Sterling, when he gets the ball now, uh, you know, he's capable of making big plays. And big plays he made, becoming the first player in the history of pro football to catch 100 passes in two seasons. Sterling Sharp is no stranger to the NFL record books. In 1993, Sharp caught 112 passes, breaking his own league record for most receptions in a single season. Touchdown, Sterling Sharp! What a catch! Sharp scored 14 touchdowns in 1993 including a playoff record three touchdown receptions while posting the fourth 1,000-yard season of his career. Oh, Favre up over the middle. It's caught by Sterling Sharp. There's a new record, and Sharp has a first down at the 45, and the National Football League has another new record. Now back to throw it, and now he steps up. Now throw it. Now he throws it into the end zone. Sharp touchdown. With first down at the 21-yard line. Here's Farr straight back in a pocket. Farr looking up over the middle. Touchdown. Sterling Sharp. Sharp, Sharp chalked up one of his record-breaking receptions in week nine's 145th regular season meeting between the Packers and the Chicago Bears. It was a classic matchup, characteristic of the black and blue division. As the Packers' Bryce Pop led the Green Bay defense, stuffing Chicago's offensive campaign. Brett Favre on the handoff to Darrell Thompson, trying to get the outside. Thompson got the first down. He got a, he touchdown. Got a touchdown. Thompson puts it away, goes to the outside. The Packers found a weakness there. What a run by Thompson. Darrell Thompson's 17-yard gallop climaxed a 12-play, 91-yard drive that sealed a Packer victory late in the fourth quarter. The Bears' final desperation drive was snuffed out by strong safety Leroy Butler, one of four Packers selected to the Pro Bowl in 1993. Leroy has the interception for the Packers. Number 36, Leroy Butler, 
is quickly becoming one of the NFL's premier strong safeties. Butler's up-tempo style of play is the driving rhythm of the Packers' young and aggressive secondary. The Packers' standout defender tallied a total of 23 passes defended in 1993, the highest single-season total by a Packer defensive back. Butler also registered a career-high six interceptions, the most by a Packard defender since Dave Brown back in 1989. The division rival Detroit Lions visited a sold-out Milwaukee County Stadium in Week 12. Green Bay special teams thrived early and often, putting the Lions on edge. Chris Jackie scored four field goals on his way to leading the Packers in scoring for the fifth consecutive year. In addition, Jackie moved into fifth place on Green Bay's all-time scoring list and currently holds the club record with 121 consecutive successful point after attempts. Here's the handoff to Bennett. Bennett looking for the hole. Did he get in or not? And they say touchdown. The Packers pulled the strings and packed the punches thanks to a Green Bay defense ranked second in the NFL. Pete's back to throw. Pete looks. Now pumps. He's hit as he throws Should it up be the intercepted. And it is picked off by the Packers' Leroy Butler. The Packers secured the victory late in the fourth quarter on Edgar Bennett's second score of the game. Here's the quarterback and the handoff to Bennett. He's going to the outside this time. Cuts it up. Touchdown, Edgar Bennett. Edgar Bennett, they went to the outside that time, Max. Brett Favre is on top of it in the end zone again. Boy, you're right about that. Over for this game. In week 13, Green Bay played host to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The two teams exchanged blows the entire game. However, it was Brett Favre's fancy footwork that helped deliver the KO as the Packer quarterback led a 15-play, 75-yard scoring drive late in the fourth quarter. Behind with just over a minute remaining, Favre found sharp in the end zone to seal the Packers' seventh victory of the season. Favre. Straight back in the pocket, rolls to the right. Now he throws in the end zone, Sharp! Touchdown! To Sterling Sharp! And the Packers have the lead with a minute 16 to go. Just be alert for that free safety. If he gets in position to cover down so that guy can blitz. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In there. Okay? Gotcha. We're not going to try and keep the easy on Minimize some of those scat protections. You don't have to worry about it. But if you call it. Brett yeah, no Favre problem. has quickly become one of the NFL's top young quarterbacks. In 1993, Favre, while becoming the most accurate career passer in Packer history, became the first quarterback in club history to complete 300 or more passes in two seasons, and only the second in team annals to post as many as two 3,000-yard seasons. I believe he's a talent, and uh, he's a great young man, and he's got a heart this big. He's got all the things you want uh, for a man playing that position. A pro bowler for his second consecutive year, Favre also became only the third passer to throw for 400 yards in a game. the Green Bay Packers emerged in San Diego for a Sunday night encounter with the Chargers. The Packers kept San Diego at bay the entire game, stifling virtually any Charger attempts to reach pay dirt. Lee 
Leroy Butler's interception helped secure the Packers' eighth victory of the season. Up the middle, and that's a touchdown for the Packers for Dell Thompson. Yeah, wide open, great blocking by that offensive line. The Pack was back in Green Bay on Week 17 for an historical matchup on the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. A victory over the Raiders would return the Packers to the playoffs for the first time in over 10 years, an accomplishment that would surely warm the hearts of the over 54,000 fans in attendance. Second down, here's Evans back to throw on second down. They chase him out of the pocket for screen, and he sets a screen up, and it's knocked down at a 38-yard line. A fumble! Tackle, do the Packers have the ball? Apparently they do. And they're going to give it to the Packers. Now the goes to the touchdown. Is that a touchdown or not? It is a touchdown for Leroy Butler! Holy cow, and the fumble recovery! The Packers executed with precision, allowing Darrell Thompson to rush for over 100 yards. Darrell on the ride. They're going to go straight up the middle there. Darrell Thompson. Darrell Thompson at the 45, the 40, the 35. It's a race. The 20, the 10, 5. Touchdown, Darrell Thompson. And that puts the Packers well out in front. It is 60 yards on the touchdown. Favre up under. Sterling Sharp comes in motion to this near side. Here's Favre back to throw it. Favre goes to the outside. It's caught by Sterling. Sterling gets away from the man at the 20, the 15, to the 10, to the 5. And he is over the goal line for a touchdown for the Green Bay Packers. Great play! Great play! Great play! Great job! Green Bay played inspired defense as rookie linebacker Wayne Simmons tallied one of his two interceptions of the season. Number 64, John Yurkovich, and the Packer defense recorded a season-high eight sacks against the Silver and Black. Oh, we got to stay in this for the last second now, right? Be yeah. focused. Think about what we want here. Yeah. Here's Barb on the handoff. to Edgar Bennett. Bennett. Now. Edgar Bennett off the right tackle position. Right tackle and guard gets in to score for the Packers. The Packers' victory returned Green Bay to the playoffs for the first time in over a decade. It's been a long time for the Green Bay Packers. The last time they were in the playoffs, 1982. Today it's against the Detroit Lions. And the Packers are trying to become the dominant team in the playoffs as they were in the 60s. Get after it, baby. Go make a play. Go make a play. One, two, three, play. Here is uh, Favre back to throw. Favre looks over the middle. Touchdown to Sterling Sharp. And did he throw a bullet? Sharp set a playoff record catching a total of three Favre shots to the end zone. Here's Favre, long second down, straight back in the pocket. Favre looking, stepping up over the middle. Touchdown, Sterling Sharp! What a catch! My goodness, and what a throw by Brett Favre. Pack is back. Reggie! Reggie! Come on, Reggie! Quarterback uh, sends a man in motion to the right and Herman Moore and back to pass. And in the middle, it is intercepted. It might go all the way for the Packers. Down the sideline to George go. Teague. All right, Teague George. at the midfield stripe. Teague at the 40. Teague is on his way. He's at the 20. Teague for a touchdown. What a run by George Teague. Teague's record-setting return kept the game close. However, the Lions roared back to take the lead late in the fourth quarter. With less than a minute remaining, the Packers had one final snap from center to take a playoff victory back to Green Bay. Favre back to throw. Favre looking. Now Favre running. Come on, run it! He's going to throw it.
ball to the end zone. He's open. That's Sharp. Wide open. Touchdown. Sterling Sharp. Wide open. He got away and yes. scored the touchdown with 55 <laughs> seconds left in the ball game. And what a pass by Brett Favre. They're mobbing him on the sidelines. He threw that high and wide about 60 yards in the air, Jim. And there was Sharp wide open. And, and I'm believe. sitting here saying, run it. <laughs> run the <to> thing. <laughs> I am so happy. I even like George Teague's bandana. <laughs> hey, congratulations. You know what? Honest to goodness, it's been that type of season where we've had to bounce back after tough losses and be a resilient football team. Our young guys have had to come through. Jim Morrissey, Joe Mott, all those guys, Mike Merriweather coming in and playing linebacker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whoever was asked to, whoever was asked to stand up and play, played. It's been that type of year. We're down 17 to 7. It's not looking real good at that point. This young man makes a play right here. All right. Oh. Hi, I'm Steve Sable. You know, Mike Holmgren has really done a sensational job as head coach in Green Bay. In 1993, the Packers qualified for the playoffs for the first time since 1972. That's more than 20 years. And you know, it's hard to believe for a team with such a fabled past. Well, now a new generation of Packers have been written into pro football's history books. Names like Favre, Sharp, and white. And then in 1994, there will be the addition of newcomers like Reggie Cobb, Sean Jones, and the first round draft pick from the Golden Dome, Aaron Taylor. So if you thought last year's Packers were exciting, wait till the kickoff to the 94 season. In 1994, the Green Bay Packers will look to take the next step thanks to the addition of several key players. I would suspect if we didn't make dramatic changes personnel-wise, which, which we might still make a couple of changes, but if we didn't, and the team just continues to mature uh, along with our quarterback, uh, then I, I feel uh, confident that, that we can upgrade our play and uh, continue to be a playoff team. At least that's my hope. Much of the Packers' hopes ride on the shoulders of Pro Bowl quarterback Brett Favre. I think there's very little question that he has the ability to be in the top five, six NFL quarterbacks in the next few years. Hands are frozen. Your hands are frozen? Are your feet frozen? Yeah. Well, well, you're out there real cold. Just think of me. I'll be right by that heater over there, okay? Yeah. Okay. Favre is sure to light it up in 94, both on the ground and through the air. down and just run through some people. Get the job done, no matter what it takes, baby. Edgar Bennett gained over 1,000 yards in 93 and will be relied upon to get the job done again in 94. In 94, Bennett will be joined in the backfield by running back Reggie Cobb, one of the Packers' off-season free agency acquisitions. <laughs> 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 
Come on, baby. Right close. Give me something to work with. Hey, Sam. Hey, they're running hard on them 18s, 19s. Huh? I want to go the other way. Hey, hey they still kind of running hard. Might need to hit them with 16, 17. Cobb is a coach's player with a nose for punishment. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, I got to get a hundred, man. Reggie Cobb should be a welcome addition to the Packers' already red-hot offense. Here's the snap. Handoff to the down. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. It is Reggie Cobb. Throws it up over the middle. It's caught by Jackie Harris. Jackie Harris trying to fight. Did he get in? Touchdown. Jackie Harris carried him into the end zone. Favre back to throw. Favre looking over. Wide open. Jackie Harris. And Harris got a touchdown. Jackie Harris down the right sideline. Now he's at the five. Now it's caught. And it is a touchdown in the end zone for the Packers. Wow. Well caught the deflation. And this time comes up to the right side. It's caught by Brooks. And Brooks at the 10. Brooks at the five. Touchdown for Robert Brooks. That's Clayton. That's oh, is it Clayton? It is Clayton. I beg your pardon. Oh, and Favre pumps it over the middle. Touchdown. touchdown. Oh, what a catch by Robert Brooks with a defender hanging on his shoulder. Defensive end Reggie White will return in 94, providing leadership and strength to the Packers organization. The future depends on uh, the kind of help that he can get around him, either through free agency or the draft. and and. Reggie is a good enough player to play very well without help, uh, without Simmons Joyner type of help. But I think that for him to really take his place as a 18, 20 sack guy and really have a preeminent season, he's got to have some help on that front seven. Help is on the way in Green Bay. Defensive end Sean Jones answered the Packers SOS and is sure to be a major contributor to Green Bay's defense a squad ranked second overall in the NFL last season. In 94, the Packers defense will be under the direction of Fritz Shermer, innovator, author, and technician. The resourceful Shermer has gained universal recognition for his creative defensive schemes, widely copied throughout the National Football League by his coaching colleagues. With the addition of Shermer, Green Bay's defense is sure to continue to be a force in 94 as the Packers look to take the next step in returning the glory to Green Bay. When I think of the Green Bay Packers, I think of Vince Lombardi. Lombardi once said, leaders are not born, leaders are made, and they are made by effort and hard work. Lombardi was a leader and a man who will forever be remembered as a winner in Green Bay. To reach the pinnacle of professional football, a team must demonstrate skill, determination, consistency, and a touch of greatness.
The Green Bay Packers of the 60s learned all these traits from their coach, Vince Lombardi. Lombardi. A certain magic still lingers in the very name. Some said he was a saint, others a martinet. To his players, he was a vibrant father figure, offering warm encouragement one moment and direct rebuke the next. He was often volatile and gruff, but beneath the stormy surface flowed a warm tide of compassion and kindness. But most of all, Lombardi was a winner. Never in his life was Lombardi associated with a losing football team. Coaches are often overrated, but as a motivator of men, Lombardi towered over all others in his profession from the first day he arrived in Green Bay. In 1959, this tiny Wisconsin hamlet had suffered through 11 straight losing seasons. The unknown assistant from the New York Giants found fan interest high, but team morale low. The golden boy, Paul Horn, had been a Heisman Trophy winner at Notre Dame, but as a quarterback, did not have the look of a pro. The other quarterback, Bart Starr, was insecure, and the fullback was a smallish, straight-ahead runner named Jim Taylor. This squad had the look of losers, and that's what they had been in 1958, 11 times in 12 games. Lombardi's rebuilding plan was as blunt and direct as the man himself. I like the running game. It takes a great deal more to put a running game together than it does to take to put a passing game together. I think everybody has to work as a team in order to make a successful running game. Uh, I like, I personally like the run. I think running at the running game is really what football is all about. And also, it makes you a little bit hard-nosed. The more you run, the more hard-nosed you are. Hard nose was a perfect description of Jim Taylor. Lombardi liked Taylor's rough neck style and saw the same trait in Paul Horning. Horning quickly became an ex-quarterback as Lombardi teamed him in the backfield with Taylor to create a ground attack that would pave a tough road to the top. That first season, the Packers went seven and five, but Lombardi was determined to drive them even higher. All the time, regardless of what game it is or anything else, you play like champions every minute out there. Go get them. Block to the machine. Block to the machine. Let's hit and lift. That's the way to come out of there. Head away there. Are you turning out or are you running a, almost a drag out of this? All you got to do is turn out. We just went over this with you a moment ago. Well, you just didn't do it if you got it. What do you mean you got it? That's the way. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Hey, he's getting to be, he's getting to get the feel, that boy. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. Lombardi called this direct approach grinding meat and he turned Green Bay into a meat-grinding machine, utilizing simple plays executed with maximum precision. Simple plays like the Packer sweep, sending Taylor one way, then horning the other. The sweep set up a trick from the Golden Boys glory days at Notre Dame to keep defenses honest. In 1960, the Packers played for the NFL championship, and in 1961, they won it. The man from the sidewalks of New York had turned a ragtag crew of losers into a romantic team of legends. The rest of the league spent the 60s trying to catch up, but the Lombardi influence extended beyond pro football as thousands of young athletes and coaches across America warmed their own competitive spirits with his example. 
After 99 wins in nine years, some sought to deify him. Others portrayed him as an evil, win-at-all-cost ogre. Those who knew him best saw the human side, a genuine concern for his players that brought out the best they had to offer, a feeling Lombardi called love. Lombardi could make his point with an outburst or a mere look. Every move was calculated to build his men, like guard Jerry Kramer, number 64. He has made the comment a number of times that you're not the greatest athletes in the world. He says, we've got guys same size, same speed, same mental ability as most of you people. But he says, there's something a little more. He says, we look for a little bit of character in an individual. He molds that character, or that something, that intangible something special about you. And uh, if you don't have it, you don't stay in Green Bay very long. Those who stayed flourished. A journeyman guard named Fuzzy Thurston became an all-pro. Bart Starr learned self-confidence. Herb Adderley switched from college runner to all-pro cornerback. And bad boy Ray Nitschke became a pussycat. From the Cleveland Browns, he stole Willie Davis, who became Green Bay's defensive captain. Coach Lombardi knew me very well, and likewise, I think I really knew Coach Lombardi. There were certain players, and I, and I really believe Coach used those players to translate his feelings. We were Lombardi people by that time, and, and, and we only seemed to respond to his kind of coaching. Lombardi people, forever united, by the strength of his will in life and death. In 1970, Lombardi died of cancer, but his legacy remained in the men he touched and the greatness he motivated them to achieve. Coach Vincent T. Lombardi, the NFL's best ever. <laughs>